it's my guess that you need a little extra help with those physics problems. Am I right? Okay, fine. Wasn't a very difficult guess, but what if I narrowed down the search? You're looking for help with uniform motion and or non-uniform motion. You want to know how I knew that? You click the button. That's what happens when you're dealing with a genius. That's my accreditation. You know that what you're about to see will actually help you. Let's start with um, uniform motion. So uniform motion is talking about basically velocity or speed. So we know that velocity is equal to the distance traveled per time increment. Okay? Now that time increment can be in seconds, hours, uh, for all you Canadians, it's, ke it's kilometers per hour in your car. Um, but in physics, we deal with meters per seconds. Okay? Meters per seconds. So if in the event the question gives you um, a distance in kilometers, you're going to have to convert it to meters. And if it's in hours, you're going to have to convert it to seconds. Um, that's a general rule of thumb. So remember, if this is just standard scalar uh, scalar talk here. Okay, if we're talking about vectors, remember velocity can become a vector and we are we are interested in direction. Not only magnitude, but direction. That's what a vector is. And if we take distance, put a little funky arrow over it, that distance turns to displacement. Once again, direction and magnitude. So let's make up a question. Let's say that Herbert, Mr. Herb, is uh, currently running away from the the uh, security cops because he decided to um, um, I don't know look at some candy too long he was loitering he was trespassing and so the question says that Herb ran ran uh, fifteen uh, thousand meters and it took him an hour to do that okay took him 60 minutes to do so. So how fast was he running? Um, okay, good news is we have a distance. Remember grasp, so we're gonna write down what is given. What's given in this? Well, we have a distance of 15,000 meters, and we have a time increment of 60 minutes. First thing we have to do is convert the 60 minutes to seconds. So I'm just going to do that right here and I'm going to multiply this by the ratio. There are 60 seconds per minute, which means that these minutes cancel each other out. And it looks like 60 times 60 is going to be, uh, shoot man, I don't even know what that is. 3,600 seconds in that hour. Okay? Um, so, we got ourselves our time increment. That is what is given. Now, what is required? We want the velocity. We know, if we analyze this thing, I'm going to go ahead and use the formula velocity equals distance over time. Okay? And so if I'm going to solve this problem, I'm going to go ahead and state that velocity equals 15,000 seconds divided by 60. Oh, good gravy. What am I doing? Take two. 15,000 meters divided by 3,600 seconds. I have no idea what that is. Okay? So let's calculate it. No, I'm going to need a calculator. Maybe I... No, 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 I don't need a calculator. I think that the answer is going to be estimated at... 4.16 repeating? Most likely. Okay. Um, 
what is this? Here's our units, meters per second. So, Herb was actually running 4.16 meters per second. That tells us an interesting picture. As Herb is sitting here loitering like a criminal, okay, um, and he saw the security cops and thought he was going to be busted, he was running. Actually, that doesn't make any sense. Four meters per second? That's not that far at all. And it took him an hour? Okay, well, he, he traveled 15,000. He probably was walking at a brisk pace, okay? So, that is uniform motion. Remember, once again, you can, um, uh, you can use this triangle method, if I find some space right here, because we have one, two, three variables, distance over time, equals velocity, you can once again use this funky little triangle and say, hey, you know what, if I'm looking for velocity, cover velocity, it's going to be distance over time. If I'm looking for time, it's going to be distance over velocity. Okay, So you can use this in this method. Now, the thing is, it gets um, a little tricky with non-uniform motion. Hold on, I got something on the screen here. There we go. Got that crummy stuff off. Like I was saying, it's different when we deal with non-uniform motion. Okay, so here's Herb. He is actually in another foot race. Um, he manages to travel 100 meters in 9.15 seconds. Okay? Um, what is his acceleration if he started at rest? Okay, this is a race. So he starts here and he starts at rest. What we want to find out is the acceleration. So let's do this again. Let's use the grass method. Let's first write down what is given in this question. We know that the initial velocity, I'm going to put a little i there, is zero meters per second. Correct? That's correct. I know that the, um, I know that the initial time is going to be zero seconds. I know that the final time, with a little f, is going to equal 9.15 seconds, okay? And what are we looking for? Are we given the final velocity? Negatory. We don't have it. So I'm going to write this down, vf equals I don't know. Do we know, what, what's the question asking? The, we wanted to know how much, uh, what's his acceleration? Okay. Now remember that acceleration can also be a vector in what direction. I'm not going to bother with that in this, in this example here. But the question is asking, acceleration is what? And I'm going to put a little box beside there because we have two arrows here. This way I know without a shadow of a doubt that this question will be answered if I have the acceleration. The acceleration is non-uniform motion. Acceleration, and this is the definition of non-uniform. I'm going to write the analysis portion. How do I have a formula that will give us uh, acceleration? Acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. That's a crappy T. Okay. Now acceleration, the change in velocity, which, which means there must be a difference in speed. Well, we know that he's starting, Herb is starting at zero meters per second, but we don't know how fast he's finishing. So we're going to have to actually figure out his velocity at the end point at 100 meters. This is easy, okay? Um, the velocity, oops, I don't want to do that. The velocity equals distance over time, which equals 100 meters divided by 9.15. And I'm going to approximate, this is going to be somewhere uh, a little bit over, over 10, okay? If it was 10 meters, it would be one meter per second. Um, and uh, so it's under 10, or it's under 10 seconds, which means we're going to be over. So I'm just going to go ahead for simplicity's sake. I know it doesn't make much sense, but I'm going to say 1.5 meters per second. Okay, let's just say that 1.5 meters per second. So he's running 1.5 meters per second, which is great. And so that must mean this equals our velocity final. So 1.5 meters per second. So what is the change in velocity? Well, we got to do the velocity final minus the velocity initial over the time final minus the time initial, which equals um, 1.5 meters per second minus zero 
divided by 9.15 minus 0, right? This is the, these are the greatest questions when you actually start at rest, when the initial speed and the initial time is 0 on both counts. So this will equal, am I going to need another calculator here again? No, 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 I'm, I'm going to need it. Gross error, gross error. Okay, if you're watching this video, look what I've done here. I believe I said it should be close a little bit over 10. I didn't put the zero here. Oh my goodness, what am I doing? So just simplicity's sake, right? Because 100 divided by 10 would be 10, right? Um, so a little bit over 10. So sorry about that. Any confusion? Look, I did that up here because I was caught. So 10 and a half. And so well, I'm not going to need a calculator here. Like, look at this. What we have here is Herb is running 10 meters, over 10 meters per second, because under 10 seconds, it, it, it takes him to run 100 meters. Um, so we have our, we have our uh, um, difference in velocity from starting at rest to 10.5, and we've gone from 0 to 9.15 seconds. And so if you just estimate this, it's going to be a little bit over 1. So we are going to say 1.2 for simplicity's sake. I don't, I don't care. 1.2 meters per second squared. Now that's the units, right? We got meters per second. Second. This is equal to squared. So me, meters per second squared is our acceleration. So acceleration is an example of non-uniform. Uh, motion, where Herb is actually accelerating per second squared 1.2 meters. So as he, as time continues, Herb is getting faster and faster and faster until he reaches 100 meters. That's when the race stops. So you can anticipate this. Now, once again, we have a variable, we have a triangle situation where acceleration is equal change in velocity over change in time. And so once again, we can use this fancy triangle. If you like that, if we're looking for time, how long it takes for someone accelerating at this, going this speed, velocity over acceleration will equal our time. Um, acceleration multiplied by time will give us our speed. Okay, so we can use this as well. I hope this helps. Uniform and non-uniform motion can be tricky, but practice definitely makes perfect in this case.